Aloha, welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title is Indictments Closing In on Trump. Uh, it's been a while since we've talked about uh, Donald Trump and his pending indictments, um, whether that they will occur or not. But uh, in the last two or three weeks, there's been a lot of activity. So to talk about that, we'll be right back. With us today is my co-host, Jay Fidel, and our special esteemed guest, Jeff Portnoy. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, we, sir. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of... Yeah, good morning, Jeff. Hey, we've been hearing a lot from, um, a lot of, from the news about uh, all sorts of activity as it concerns indi potential indictments and certainly new evidence pertaining to the document Mar-a-Lago case, uh, certainly some information about January 6th, and also the Georgia election fraud case. So they're all kind of uh, swirling out there in the wind, and I thought we'd take a little bit of time to discuss some new developments. Uh, Jay, to you. You know, right now, Jack Smith, as uh, just recently, was able to get Mark Meadows in front of a grand jury as of yesterday. And the question you th I have is, and it's speculation, of course, and you know that's where we're gonna do a little bit here today, is a little speculation, a little guessing. But uh, do you think Mark Meadows finally just gave up and decided to cooperate? Or was he compelled with contempt? Or um, way out there in the left field, was he possibly offered an immunity? Or is he going to go in front of the grand jury and take the fifth, you know? Or so, did he take the fifth? Yeah. I, you know, I don't have a clear feeling about that, Tim. I, I'm, I'm afraid. Maybe Jeff has a, a more clear feeling than me, but... I, I really can't tell from from those um, from those possibilities which one prevails. Um, I, I think maybe I mean, maybe um, he made a deal with Smith. Maybe he made a deal with Smith because you know bottom line is uh, he's he's greatly exposed here, and uh, if if um, you know uh, if this thing uh, if he doesn't cooperate, he he could be prosecuted. And so maybe that's what motivates him to go down and talk about Trump. And I just, I don't know. I feel, I feel that Trump is working so hard on all these cases you want to discuss today to try to delay them and avoid, you know, prosecution. Um, so I don't have a clear feeling. You know, Jack Smith actually took the, um, the opportunity to meet with Trump's attorneys. Uh, their request was for Jack Smith to drop all charges. Uh, I suppose it was a courtesy meeting, uh, but it seems to me that Mark Meadows would be one of the last key witnesses that Jack Smith would like to hear from. And now that that conversation's taken place, uh, any guesses on, or any bets, and no pizzas, please, uh, any bets on how soon we may see an indictment come from Jack Smith on the document Mar-a-Lago case? I mean, it doesn't sound like, um, you know, that meeting went anywhere. It lasted two hours, which in, you know, in the world of um, this, these cases is really a very short meeting. Uh, maybe it was uh, to say hello. Maybe it was for them to say no. Um, so I, I don't know if it really tells us all that much. Um, you know, and, and the timing, you know, I have this kind of mental um, uh, um, chronometer, you know, uh, it, it ticks back and forth. Um, every day, and every day is a day later, and we don't we don't see the serious indictments. Credit to uh, Alvin Bragg um, for doing his thing in New York, but uh, we don't have it from Georgia, we don't have it from Mar-a-Lago, and we don't have it from January sixth. So I don't have any sense that this is you know building momentum for a a prompt indictment on any of those three. And well, I'm sorry to see that because I think a couple of thoughts. Let me th share with yeah. you. Um, number one is, um, you know, Trump wants to delay. I think delay works in his favor. Um, and so I don't understand why the Department of Justice is not moving faster. Let's go to trial already. You know, I'm sure they can get an indictment. The other, the other thing that interests me is that this is being played out in the press. Those elements that you mentioned, you know, are asking Jeff and me to opine and speculate, those elements are going everywhere in the country. Um, everybody is aware of this. Everybody can make that speculation. So you you actually have one the the, the silent uh, uh, chronometer, 
and um, that I talk about where, you know, where nothing comes out of it for years already. And um, the other one is the media uh, reporting all these things, and that has to have an effect. So we have, we have a trial already going on in the public sphere. And the, the real question is, how does that affect a, a jury, if there ever is one? Uh, how does that affect um, you know, the proceedings, including the appellate courts, uh, if they ever get their hands on this? Um, in, in terms of the, um, the public trial, with all the people seeing the media, I would say that uh, for, it's, it's the bubbles. On the one side, you know, you have the liberal people who have already convicted him on all three of these cases. Um, and on the other side, you have the base which has convicted him on none of these cases. Mm -hmm. I, wish, I wish you could put, you know, 330 million people in a room and have them decide. That'd be the biggest jury ever, wouldn't it? Jeff, you know, you're an attorney. You, you, you know what subpoenas are all about and the uh, evidence that be gathered as of a risotto subpoena. We have, a, we have a case here where the Department of Justice issued suit, two subpoenas and they wanted to see surveillance video of, of you know, various areas of the Mar-a-Lago property. And lo and behold, after the second subpoena was issued, like a day or two after, the pool was drained and the water came into the surveillance room and quote unquote, um, compromised some evidence. Now, does that pass the giggle test, the smell test? If you're the prosecutor or even the judge in this one or potential judge, um, how, you, how are you gonna look at that one? Bad luck. Bad luck. You know, these things happen. Pools leak. The dental. And, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, upcoming indictments, which you guys keep talking about every week, uh, since... Uh, every other week, Jeff. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been how many months now? Uh, I don't think they're coming. And uh, if they do come, I'm not so sure, as Jay suggests, Trump is trying to delay them. I frankly think part of him wants them to come as soon as they can. Now that he's in a race uh, with, uh, you know, 106 other candidates and his base is eroding slowly but surely, I'm not so sure he needs some boogie people. He used to say boogie men, but you can't do that anymore. You know, boogie people that uh, he can point to. Nobody cares about New York. Everybody's forgotten about that one already. And, you know, you're going to indict him for January 6th? I would bet heavily that that will never happen. You're going to indict him for Georgia? I don't know much about that one, but you have a prosecutor who can probably, and you know, indict a donut. Uh, and then the question is, does the Justice Department indict him for, uh, you know, the, the classified documents? That one, to me, is a can of worms politically and legally. So there's much to do about nothing so far. And, uh, you really? know, I'm, yeah, I mean, really? so what's come out of all this? Okay. <laughs> let's, just, let's your, look at, just, let's, just your shows. What else has come out of this? Yeah, you know, my show is a duck. I hear it going into the lake right now. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> shooting, it, shooting it down. All right. <laughs> we have Donald Trump on, on audio. We have Donald Trump saying, Oh, I have, he's waving this document. You can hear the rustling in the background. He says, oh, but I can't show it to you because it's classified. Now, if you remember what his defense was, is only I can, you know, declassify things. Just by thinking about it, I can declassify. So here he's on audio doing 180 degree opposite um, comment about the fact that I can't show it to you because it's classified and it's in my possession. Doesn't this... Why, why is this not just a concrete slam dunk uh, piece of evidence? For what? That he obstructed. He didn't obstruct anything. He, he, he wanted to make sure he didn't turn over the documents. That's obstruction, is it not? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, this is so political, and, and I get it. And, you know, we all know how well, evil... Well, this is a political show, but... <laughs> we, no, it has some legal aspects to it, I assume. I mean, we all know what a bad person Trump is. It doesn't need any more indictments to uh, to prove that. I mean, uh, you know, as Jay points out, 50% of the country thinks he's a scoundrel and 
30% thinks he walks on water and 20% aren't sure. You think another indictment is going to change anything? And, you know, the judicial process oh, I... is very long and very tedious. And, you know, he might get indicted again. But so what? That, that's my point, Mr. Tim. So what? So what? So what? So, so what? Is what? he above the law, Jeff? Is no, Donald Trump so... really above the law? Because if it was me, and it wouldn't be because I wouldn't do something that stupid. But if it was me, do you think I would not already be in the Huskow? Uh, I don't know. But uh, I do know this, that it's political. And whenever you get political issues involved with legal issues, it doesn't always turn out the way that some people want it to turn out. So, you know, is he going to get indicted for one or more of these things? Uh, you asked when and how, and, you know, I, to me, it's not a big deal. I mean, I, I just think it plays into his hands, to be honest. I mean, as soon as the Justice Department indicts him, that 30% will go up to 35%. Uh, that uh, is that is possible, and I think you have a point there. Um, thank you, Jeff. Jay, that's all right. Just... It's always a pleasure. Thanks. Can I? <laughs> You're not yeah. going anywhere just oh, yet. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> is the show over now? Is the show over yet? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, I don't know what it is when I bring you two together, but I lose all control of my show, <laughs> my ability to, you know, moderate this this program. But it happens almost every time. So, uh, Jay, you just heard Jeff describe that. Maybe this indictment isn't that big deal because it's political. Uh, do you take issue with those those comments? I mean, I like is Donald Trump is this. Donald Trump above the law? My, my reaction listening to Jeff, and I always have a reaction listening to Jeff. He, it's true, you he do. He wants me to have a reaction, and I do have a reaction. You know, <laughs> it, it's like all a question of timing. Okay, um, if this had been what the, the public would have perceived as appropriate timing. If, if this had happened, if there had been indictments in what the public considered the ordinary course, um, then you would have had a, a kind of a big statement by the Department of Justice that um, we should have confidence in them, that they don't dawdle, that they get it done. Um, but, you know, it's hard to feel that way now. Too much time has gone by. And, and it makes it worse that the media has played the case out. We've already seen the trial. We already know the evidence. We know. And so what are we left with? We're left with a big, huge, looming question, you know, should we have confidence in, in, in the legal process here? Um, too much time has gone by for us to have any, any serious... Well, isn't, justice, isn't the wheels of justice slow? If, if, I, if I hear that one more time, I am <laughs> going to lose my breakfast. But, but let, me, let me know, the wheels of justice can't be this slow. We're talking about public confidence. And the other side of the issue, Tim and Jeff, is that this is, I think, what Trump wants. He is, he is attacking the system. He is draining the swamp. He is criticizing all the law enforcement agencies he can find. And when the Department of Justice doesn't move fast enough, when the, the, the DA in Georgia doesn't move fast enough, it, it feeds right into that argument. So these guys can't get their act Look. together. You can't have confidence in them. No one has ever prosecuted a, a former president of the United States. Don't you have to have 99.9% .9 lined up and ready to go that you are going to be successful in your prosecution? You wouldn't go in at a 50% or a 60%. Maybe it's taking longer because you have to be spot on and close up all the doors that there's an escape route to. I mean, isn't that part of why it's taking so long, Jay? But are you suggesting this is a, is a different approach because this guy happens to be a former president of the United States? Are, are, Absolutely, saying I'm saying it's a different approach. Hasn't Merrick Garland said without fear or favor, you know, he's going to steam yeah, ahead? Well, Merrick Garland well, says a lot of things. Yeah, well, okay. Um, you know, I don't, I don't feel there should be a difference. Um, well, and, there is. Of course there I also, is. I want to ask, you know, we have a litigator among us, you know, Jeff, I want to, can, may I intercede and ask a question? I have a question, Jeff. When you go to trial, um, are you 99% sure or even 100% sure? I think the answer is no. You, you get your evidence together the best you can. You're very aware of the realities. 
the fact that the judge could be against you, the jury could be against you, your witnesses could collapse on the stand, who knows what would happen, and two witnesses who are suborned and jurors, um, you know, who are intimidated and all that stuff, um, you never get 99 or 100%, never. But you lawyer it the best you can with what you have, and you sail into that courtroom and you try to get what you want. And that's so not only in um, you know civil civil proceedings, but in criminal ones also. You can't be sure, and often the Department of Justice has been sure and has failed. Um, so my my point is that um, this whole thing about dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's and the wheels of justice are slow. Um, it's not really that. It's the lawyering that counts. And part of lawyering these days is to feed the media and not doing anything for two years, a year and a half, whatever it is, how long is it now, um, you know, doesn't doesn't do the job. You've got to get in there, roll up your sleeves, talk to the jury. Well, am, I I right, you know, am I right, Jeff? Well, partially, but I think both of you make, you know, valid points. One, if you're a Democratic administration going after a former Republican president during an electoral season, you could pretty well better be sure that you've got every duck you can lined up where you might not be that concerned about it in a run-of-the-mill case against even a city councilman or something. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know, the delay is not helping anybody, and you're just pushing this off till after the election. I guarantee that if he gets indicted tomorrow, he'll never go to trial until after November 2024. Even the run-of-the-mill criminal cases get put off months and years into the future with agreements between the prosecutor and the defense counsel. So, you know, it's a no-win situation for the Biden Justice Department. On one hand, they got people like you, Jay, who are all after him for not having indicted Trump months ago. And on the other hand, they're looking at indicting a former president in the middle of an election season, which is only going to benefit him. There's no question in my mind. That's why when everyone says or you suggest, you know, he's delaying things and delaying things, I don't agree with that. I think he's just waiting and hoping that the shoe drops sooner rather than later if it's going to drop. So he has something to campaign against because he's running out of things to talk about. You know, it's pretty clear that the election denial issue is not going to get him anywhere, even as you know, opposing candidates in the primary are going to be picking them on that. But can you imagine if he shows up as an indicted former president by the Biden administration? God, he's got a great campaign issue. Well, yeah, you, I, you know, you're right. This theater is all playing out through the campaign. Yeah. And, uh, and, and may they'll, they'll have trouble getting him to trial before the election. But let's, let's assume for a moment that it, that it goes to trial before the election. Let's assume that. Or something dispositive happens, you know, to, to make a result sometime before the election. If Trump wins that, okay, it's a mandate, isn't it? And well, that, I mean, you know... Wait, let me. Let me no, no, go ahead. Sure. I, want, I want you to speak, Jeff. I no, you I, don't. I will never go ever ahead. stand in your way. Um, so if if somehow you're sitting, Trump, you're sitting, aren't you? No, I'm standing because oh, I, need I'm to, sorry. I need to stand in attention when I talk uh, to some people. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> so if Trump prevails in some way between now and the election, it's a mandate, and the the crowd will say, "See, he was right all the time." He's going to get an enormous landslide of, of votes if he prevails. Okay, if he fails, um, you know, if he loses, say there is a trial and he loses the trial, um, he's going to call it a witch hunt, part of the same kind of geo, uh, rather uh, democratic uh, witch hunt against the GOP. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, there's no question what he'll do. He'll, he'll try to downplay it. Uh, and he'll, he'll say, I, you know, I was just trying to drain the swamp and look, the swamp drains itself. Um, so, I, you know, I don't think either he wins or loses before the trial. Um, there's, there's, there's really a significant difference because he, he has arguments in either case. The third possibility is, as you suggest, that nothing happens. That what, just... what, what, what has been the fallout from the civil verdict against him? Zero. 
Well, that's see, it. That's just the, gave it just gave him the opportunity to go on his internet sites and rail and rail against the judge, the jury, the woman who won the case. So now she's filed a new case. He's impervious to that. We're talking about Donald Trump. He's a Roy Cohn acolyte. He's got 40 years of being impervious to the judicial and legal system. He doesn't care. He's above it in his own mind. No matter what happens to him, he's got the ability to turn it around. He's All a right. master showman. All right. We have a case in, in the Bragg prosecution where the judge has laid out some specific instructions yeah. to dummy up, to be quiet. Is Donald Trump above contempt of court? No. No, he made his point. Will a judge though. ever? I, I, I will, would a judge ever say that's it? Yeah, I of give course. You multiple warnings. Of course. You are going. But he's not an idiot. What's what has he done <laughs> since then? He shut up. Yeah. Right. He hasn't he said anything about that. Well, remember that's a long time since then. Yeah. You know, the, the fickle finger moves on. The news cycle moves on. We can't right. even remember what happened. And that's the problem. If you're playing for the theater, it's right now that counts. It's it's the news cycle. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, the best thing that may have happened in the last 24 hours regarding all of these potential criminal cases is Chris Christie. Yes, that was. Wait, <laughs> wait for the August debate. Wait for well, the former well, U.S. Wait for the former U.S. attorney who's got nothing to lose. Go after Trump on these potential criminal charges, because he's the only one who has the opportunity and the ability to try it. So once we know the, de well, I'm going to say once we know the details, not if we know the details, once we know the details of these indictments, will Chris Christie dive head first into that, that accusation pool? He's going to do it anyway. Well, he's, he's going to know what the details are. He's part, he's, oh, we know a lot of details already. Um, you know, well, until you see the indictment, you really I, don't. I think Christie, you know, I, I would I would accept Jeff's point on that. Christie as a force in the public theater is a greater force than any one of these indictments because because it's going to be mano y mano, nose to nose, uh, over and over again. It's not just uh, it's not just August, you know. It's already yeah. happening. It happened in his um, you know statement that he made when he announced his candidacy. And so a, a guy like that is reveals Trump and and the public will not forget. And if they forget after a week or two, he will remind them he'll keep that thing going from now till the election, not only August, but every day. And and so, people, I've got two attorneys on this show right now, and I've got to. Take no, a you only have you only have one real one. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Here we go again. I got Laurel and I got Hardy on here. Uh, oh, right. that you do have. That you yeah. do have. Okay. So I'm going to take a left turn here. Jeff, how difficult is it to pierce the attorney-client confidentiality relationship? How difficult is that to happen? And it has happened. So what does that mean? It's very difficult unless you can show the attorney and the client were involved in some kind of criminal activity. And okay. that may be, and that may be, you know, that the attorneys were intentionally hiding information. Uh, you know, now they're saying, uh, I read the other day, you know, that they were misled by Trump, that Trump didn't tell them the truth. You know, they're all running for the hills, but he doesn't have any trouble finding lawyers who are apparently are willing to work for nothing. Because he doesn't yeah. pay his legal bills. Okay, so how serious <laughs> is it when his former attorneys are uh, going in and facing a grand jury? How serious is that? Well, you know, I don't know. Because my guess is, as Jay speculated before about Mark Meadows, they may go in there and take the fifth. I mean, why fight the subpoena, which you're going to lose? Just go in, and plead the fifth, hope you get a deal. But it's very hard to pierce uh, attorney-client privilege. I mean, we saw that with organized crime. And this is very similar. So, okay. you know, you know, unless there was some conspiracy but to Jack violate the law, it. did did what? He got He's, Mark Meadows to go in or he got No, no, no. He got Trump's former attorneys to go in. They've I know, gone but, in. but what have they done? What have they said? Well, we don't know yet. Right. <laughs> Come on. That's that's, that's <laughs> my I'd point. The fact, I like, I like okay. to well, add one, my point is this the fact that they point. have gone in. 
All right. The bottom line is it's very, very hard. All right. I'd like, to, I'd like to add that when Congress, when, when the House subpoenaed Mark tough. Meadows, the House subpoenaed Is Mark this Meadows. Laurel or Hardy that's talking now? That's what I want to know. Uh, it's Abbott. <laughs> oh, Costello. Well, you keep it up and I'll say heckle and jekyll. Keep it up. <laughs> Most people are watching this thinking they're watching the Three Stooges. No, they're watching you, Jeff. <laughs> All right, Jeff, that's enough of that. Go ahead, Jay. So, you have the floor. Yeah, so now you're in trouble, came, Jeff. Came, you know, <laughs> you, you realize that uh, Meadows was subpoenaed by the House January 6th committee, and uh, he, he refused. He told them all to get stuck. He wasn't going to respond to the subpoena. So they, they went to the Department of Justice and right. said, would you please, um, you know, prosecute him for contempt? And DOJ said no. They weren't going to do it. You know, I, I, and I don't remember, or maybe nobody ever knows why they took that position. But he, he really never was accountable for his failure to appear in front of Congress. Well, look, I mean, Tim, we're joking around, and obviously it's very serious stuff. I, I just think it's very, very hard when politics trump the legal system. And I, I say that using the words advisedly. And it's, it's an it's a, such an, a difficult situation for the Justice Department because on one hand, there may well be very legitimate legal reasons to indict Trump. But on the other hand, there may be overwhelming political reasons not to. That's a very well, difficult does, dilemma. No, it does, All right, it goes so let's, beyond let's, politics. Let's, let's, let's go with that. beyond because... politics. This is the autocrat's playbook. You try okay. to diminish the authority of the government. Um, and, and, you know, we have that, we had that even a week ago. And for that matter, the Freedom Caucus still takes the position that, uh, you know, we shouldn't increase the debt ceiling and the country should just dissolve. You know, we don't want any stinking government here. Well, that, okay, really, Jay, I'm going to go with that. I want to ask issue, Jeff that, that question. That I autocratic wanna... issue is on the table right now. Okay. D by the fact that this is political season, that there is a prosecution, there are potential indictments, does that erode the confidence of the American public uh, when it concerns the justice system? That no, because politics I, seems, I, That politics seems to give uh, a former president a get out of free jail, a get out of jail free card. No, I think because I think your view on that is directly related to your view on the political issue. It, it, Maybe. It's, it, it's totally colored by your by your politics as to how you feel about no indictment, a delayed indictment. Okay, well, let's say we have half the country, 50% of the country, because it's 50-50 split practically in this country. All right, this country. Well, well, let me put it this way, okay? How many people do you think are really concerned about the fact that a president took a classified document to his house? No, seriously. You, you ask 100 people, to list the top 10 things they're concerned about, I don't think it shows up in the top 10. I'm just being totally honest. I don't well, think the know, public gives a rip, whether it's me, illegal or not. Let me answer that question. It depends on who he's showing it to. If he's showing a classified documents to God knows who in Russia or his, um, you know. That's, that's not the test, though. The test is he did it. And 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 the uh, the failure here is that DOJ could have had some kind of accountability here if it moved quicker. It gave Trump and his friends the opportunity to mess this all up and confuse people and make them ask the very question that, that Jeff is asking. You know, does it really Well, I, I would argue, Jay, that because if you did a, a rush prosecution and indictment, it would look even more political. What's a rush prosecution? We know- Well, I mean, them. if you said this is taking too long, I mean, if you were to put this on a fast timeline, uh, to Jeff's point, uh, now you really made it look like it's a political um, get even. Well, I think the, uh, the the liberal side of the you know the room is is going to find anything he did um, was indictable and convictable. Well, I'm telling uh, you this: if if they the, do indict him, the conservative side of the room is gonna is gonna okay. find that it's all a witch hunt and it doesn't matter, and, you know, and, and the delay makes them wonder about the, but, um, the, um, the, the, the institutions around government. But you raised before the odds of when someone should or should not be indicted, both of you. I don't think there's any question in my mind that unless they are about as close to 100% sure 
that the evidence is so overwhelming that any jury, whether they have a high school education or not, will do something other than convict. They are not bringing that indictment. And I can understand why they are they uncovering. Never that, they can never and have they that can, insurance. And they can. And they are uncovering every rock that they can possibly find. And I think if they don't feel close to 100 percent, and I mean very close, he will not be indicted. Because uh, the worst possible thing, Jay Fidel, is an indictment and an acquittal. That is the worst scenario of any kind that the three of us can consider. That I could agree. happen. That could happen I agree. no matter how well prepared they are, you know, how, how many uh, dots, the I's, the crosses, the T's, it could happen. And while that trial is going on, there'd be all kinds of shenanigans. So um, when do you reach the point of 100%? You don't. And if that's the test on whether to indict him or try to indict well, yes, him. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I mean, well, let's assume that Mark Meadows <clears throat> spilled the beans. Let's just assume it. You're pretty close to 100%. Right there. I mean, you are. Well, that would no, argue I mean, for... That, that's a big assumption, by the way. That, that would a be a assumption. vote for immunity then, wouldn't but, but, it? Yeah. But, but even Probably. then, even if he spilled the beans in that uh, you know, meeting with the Department of Justice uh, or the grand jury that where he was uh, testifying, and I'm not sure that really does it. I'm not sure that gives you 100%. Well, but it's not by itself. I mean, my assumption is that they are going step by step by step by step. You and I may feel they're taking too many steps, that it's too delayed. I come to the bottom line, which I just said. Mm -hmm. An indictment without a conviction is the worst possible scenario. And no I, indictment. I... No indictment is 10 times better. Okay, wait. Oh, is it really? Yes. yes first, it is. First, first of all, um, I agree with you. Know, Jeff. I, I, I disagree because I think that um, if if you if you can't get a conviction, uh, it it may be mm, just the way things go. No matter how much evidence you have lined up. And the other thing, the other thing I want to I want to add is that um, the if you have no indictment, no indictment. After spreading all this evidence so far that they have, all this you know, tabloid reporting for the past year and a half, where everybody in the world really knows what happened here, okay, and if you have no indictment, what does that say? Huh? What does it say? If you want to take the other side of it, I'll play uh, the 35% that love Trump. How come Hunter Biden hasn't been indicted yet? You want to talk about no indictment taking forever? I mean, how about that, Jay? You must be very happy about that one. They got no evidence. Oh, no. No, they have no evidence. They have the computer. They have a guy who's been involved in all kinds of things. I'm not saying he should be indicted. I'm just saying, how come you're not concerned about how long that's taking? That investigation is still ongoing. They have no evidence. Well, then well, why I, are they I, still I, investigating I, I just think that no indictment that's, that's means... That's another question, by the way. Going, that's back, the, to my, that's take going two. back to my earlier point. That's take two. If that's the right. Department of Justice <laughs> decides... You know, like, for example, just a few days ago, they said, we are not going to prosecute Pence, right? That was a public announcement. You know, That you came as such a shock, by the way. You don't look shocked. I was to shocked me, by that statement. The guy, the, your consultant behind you may look shocked, but you're not shocked. Um, <laughs> what, what I'm saying, though, is that, that that is really something um, that they said they weren't going to, you know, prosecute, okay? And they're not going to say that with Hunter Biden because you know why? It sounds too political. Uh, if they were forced to make a decision and say what their plan was, if they had, they were forced to make a decision and say, you know, we don't have it on these other two cases, January 6th and Mar-a-Lago. We are, we are not going to prosecute. How many boxes? How many fox boxes did they find in Biden's offices and home of classified documents? Let me finish. Well, it's how he treated it. <laughs> the way I if mean, they, the way if they, if they Donald Trump there, treated he... it versus Biden is day and night. Well, that's true, but that doesn't change the crime. If you rob the bank and then decide to return the money, you still rob the bank. Hey, as a former bank manager, let me address that. No, I just <laughs> okay. Guess what? We've run out of time. 
You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm reluctant to ask for last thoughts. I really am reluctant. But however, I'm a masochist. So, Jeff, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> Jay, by all I'm means. Done. I'm done, too. I, I can't, I can't right. afford to have Guess this what? thing. Are we done yet? We're yes, out of time. I'd like yeah. to thank my guests, <laughs> my esteemed guests, <laughs> Jeff Portnoy, <laughs> and my ever-loving co-host, Jay Fidel. My God, when I do this show, I never know what I'm going to get. And guess what? I didn't brilliant. know I was going to get this. All you get is brilliant. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. All right. Guess what? Why don't you join us next week for American Issues Take One? I'm Tim Apicella, I think. And won't you join us next week? Until then, aloha. Aloha.